stop Obama on this. It will be his Waterloo. Friday, March 6, 1857, a very old man who was born just eight months and 13 days after the Declaration of Independence was adopted, a man who was married to the sister of the man who wrote the Star Spangled Banner, a man who was enlightened enough to have freed his own slaves and given pensions to the ones who had become too old to work, read aloud in a reed thin voice from a very long handwritten document. In it, he ruled on a legal case involving a slave brought by his owner to live in a free state yet to remain a slave. The slaves sought his freedom and sued, and looking back over legal precedent and the Constitution and the America in which it was created, this judge ruled that no black man could ever be considered an actual citizen of the United States. They had for more than a century before been regarded as beings of an inferior order and altogether unfit to associate with the white race, either in social or political relations, and so far unfit that they had no rights, which the white man was bound to respect. Operation Chaos. The dream end. I mean, if people say, what's your exit strategy? Strategery. The dream end of this is that this keeps up to the convention. And that we have a replay of Chicago 1968. With burning cars, protests, fires, literal riots, and all of that. That's the objective here. And there has been nothing that's happened on the battlefield. For my, uh, my, my, uh, my vision of this change. They had for more than a century before been regarded as beings of an inferior order and altogether unfit to associate with the white race, either in social or political relations, and so far unfit that they had no rights, which the white man was bound to respect. The case, of course, was Dred Scott. The old man was the fifth Chief Justice of the United States of America, Roger Brooke Tawney. The outcome, he believed, would be to remove the burning question of abolition of slavery from the political arena for once and for all. The outcome, in fact, was the Civil War. No American ever made a single bigger misjudgment. No American ever carried the responsibility for the deaths and suffering of more Americans on his shoulders. No American was ever more quickly vilified. Within four years, Chief Justice Taney's rulings were being ignored in the South and the North. Within five, President Lincoln, at minimum, contemplated arresting him. Within seven, he died in poverty while still Chief Justice. Within eight, Congress had voted to not place a bust of him alongside those of the other former Chief Justices. But good news tonight, Roger B. Taney is off the hook. Today the Supreme Court of Chief Justice John Roberts, in a decision that might actually have more dire implications than Dred Scott v. Sanford, declared that because of the alchemy of its 19th century predecessors in deciding that corporations had all the rights of people, any restrictions on how these corporate beings spend their money on political advertising are unconstitutional. In short, the First Amendment, free speech for persons, which went into effect in 1791, applies to corporations, which were not recognized as the equivalents of persons, until 1886. In short, there are now no checks on the ability of corporations or unions or other giant aggregations of power to decide our elections. None. They can spend all the money they want, and if they can spend all the money they want, sooner rather than later, they will implant the legislators of their choice in every office, from president to head of the visiting nurse service. And if senators and congressmen and governors and mayors and councilmen and everyone in between are entirely beholden to the corporations for election and re-election to office, soon they will erase whatever checks there might still exist to just slow down the ability of corporations to decide the laws. It is almost literally true that any political science fiction nightmare you can now dream up, no matter whether you are conservative or liberal, it is now legal. Because the people who can make it legal can now be entirely bought and sold. No actual citizens required in the campaign fundraising process. And the entirely bought and sold politicians can change any laws. And any legal defense you can structure now can be undone by the politicians who will be bought and sold into office this November or two years from now. And any legal defense which honest politicians can somehow wedge up against them this November or two years from now 
that can be undone by the next even larger set of politicians who will be bought and sold into office in 2014 or 2016 or 2018. Mentioning Lincoln's supposed ruminations about arresting Roger B. Tawney, he didn't say the original of this, but what the hell? Right now you can prostitute all the politicians some of the time and prostitute some of the politicians all the time, but you cannot prostitute all the politicians all the time. Thanks to Chief Justice Roberts, this will now change. Unless this near mortal blow is somehow undone within 10 years, every politician in this country will be a prostitute. And now let's contemplate what the perfectly symmetrical, money-driven world of that order might look like. Be prepared first for laws criminalizing or at least neutering unions. In today's court decision, they are the weaker of the non-human sisters unfettered by the court. So, as in ancient Rome or medieval England, they will necessarily be strangled by the stronger sibling, the corporations, so that they pose no further threat to the corporation's total control of our political system. Be prepared then for the reduction of taxes for the wealthy and for the corporations and the elimination of the social safety nets for everybody else because money spent on the poor means less money left for the corporations. Be prepared then for wars sold as the new products, which Andy Card once described them as year after year as if they were new Fox reality shows because military industrial complex corporations are still corporations. Be prepared then for the ban on same-sex marriage, and on abortion, and on evolution being taught, and on separation of church and state. The most politically agitated group of citizens left are the evangelicals. Throw them some red meat to feed their holier-than-thou rationalizations, and they won't care what else you do to this corporate nation. Be prepared then for racial and religious profiling, because you've got to blame somebody for all the reductions in domestic spending and civil liberties just to make sure the agitators against the United Corporate States of America are kept unheard. Be prepared for those poor, dumb, manipulated bastards, the Tea Partiers, to have a glorious few years as the front men, as the corporations that bankroll them slowly unroll their total control of our political system. And then be prepared to watch them be banished, maybe outlawed, when a few of the brighter ones suddenly realize that the corporations have made them merely the Judas goats of American freedom. And be prepared then for the bank reforms that President Obama has just this day vowed to enable to be rolled back by his successor, purchased by the banks with the money President Bush gave them, his successor, presumably President Palin, because if you need a friendly face of fascism, you might as well get, well, get one that can wink. And if you need a tool of whichever large industries buy her first, you might as well get somebody who lives up to that word, tool. Be prepared for the little changes, too. If there are any small towns left to take over, Walmart can now soften them up with carpet advertising for their Walmart town council candidates brought to you by Walmart. Be prepared for the Richard Mellon scapes to drop such inefficiencies as vanity newspapers and simply buy and install their own city governments in the Pittsburghs. Be prepared for the personally wealthy men like John Kerry to become the paupers of the Senate, or the ones like Mike Bloomberg not even surviving the primary against Halliburton's choice for mayor of New York City. Be prepared for the end of what you're watching now.